Hi everyone, this is Fabi here and in today's video I will be explaining the fundamentals of the LIN bus or local interconnect network and telling you how you can experiment with it at home. This video is part of an educational series I am doing on my channel called Embedded Systems Explained and the aim of this series is to teach you embedded systems concepts in a simple to understand manner and with examples of how you can use them in the real world. I will put a link to the playlist in the pinned comment down below, so make sure to check out the other videos if you're interested. Together with the CAN bus, FlexRay and most, the LIN bus is one of the most used communication interfaces in the automotive field. Because implementing CAN in every non-safety critical system of a car is very expensive, car manufacturers have developed the LIN bus as a low-cost, low-end alternative zero communication bus. LIN is used in cars for things like rain sensors, climate control, window control and many other systems like these. The physical layer of LIN is very simple. There's just one data line and one grounding line, which makes it possible to implement LIN using just a microcontroller and its serial communication interface. Voltage levels on the bus are higher than what microcontrollers normally work with, with 9 to 18 volts being a usual range and 12 volts being typical because we are talking about cars and cars have 12 volts batteries in them. So voltage shifting circuits are going to be needed when using microcontrollers to implement the bus. The communication line is kept at logical level 1 by pull-up resistors when idle, as you can see from the block diagram on the screen right now. As with CAN, the logical levels of LIN are named recessive and dominant, with recessive being a logical 1 and dominant being a 0. Because the LIN bus is recessive by default, it will be pulled down to 0 or to the dominant level by the nodes when they wish to communicate. Before moving on, I just want you guys to hear a quick message from today's sponsor PCBWay, which specializes in making PCBs just like this one, or just like ones you developed yourself. Special thanks to PCBWay, which is a one-stop shop for all your PCB prototyping, 3D printing and CNC machining needs. Click the link in the description to buy 5 PCBs with 2-4 to four day shipping for under $30. If you have an idea for a new product or already have everything developed, PCBWay offers complete manufacturing services from producing PCBs, buying the necessary parts, assembling the PCBs, CNC machining, 3D printing, even injection molding, all the way to final assembly. No matter how complex your project is, PCBWay has got you covered. As far as the network topology goes, LIN is a single master, multiple slave network or as recently renamed Single Commander Multiple Responder Network. The responders, as the name already implies, are only able to communicate when the commander requests information from them. Because the commander is the only one who can initiate communication, there's obviously no need for bus abrutation mechanisms. The maximum number of nodes in a network is 17, including the commander, which will also play the role of a gateway to the CAN bus in an automotive system, allowing the LIN network to be connected to the rest of the car. Fun fact, LIN has exploded in popularity over the last decade, and in fact, the number of LIN nodes in a car has surpassed that of CAN nodes around 2016. On the data link layer, we have the following structure for the LIN message frame. The message header and the message response. The commander is responsible for sending out the message header, which is basically the query that it wishes to send, and the message response is what the responders send back. The message header is composed out of a break, which signals the start of the frame, a sync field, which allows the other nodes to synchronize their clocks with the commander, and a 6-bit identification field. This identification field tells the responders what task to accomplish, which could be to ignore the message altogether, to listen to the data received, or to respond back with information. It's important to note that only one responder will respond to the query from the commander, because otherwise there would be collisions on the bus. The message response consists of a 1 to 8 byte data field and an 8 bit checksum. An important thing to keep in mind is that all bytes are accompanied by one start bit and one stop bit, just like in regular WART serial communication. 
As far as the checksum goes, in earlier LIN versions only the data field, so the actual payload, was taken into consideration. However, LIN versions being used currently use the identifier field for calculating the checksum as well. The checksum is simply calculated by adding the bytes together and keeping only the least significant 8 bits out of the result. While this error detection system is totally not perfect, it does provide a level of confidence in the message being received. Unlike CAN for example, there are no error correction mechanisms implemented here. As far as speeds go, LIN goes up to 20 kilobits per second and there's also a length limitation to 130 feet or 40 meters. As you can already tell, LIN is much less sophisticated when compared to CAN, so this does translate into the fact that you can experiment with it at home much easier and it also costs much less to do this. We already talked about the fact that you can use the WART interface on microcontrollers like the MSP430 to implement LIN, but the voltage levels of LIN, which are between 9 to 18 volts mostly, are way out of the range of what most microcontrollers work with. This means that we'll need extra circuitry acting like a middleman between the microcontroller and the LIN bus. This can either be a specialized chip which takes as signals from the microcontroller the serial receive and transmit lines and connects to the LIN bus or discrete circuitry like a transistor. You can see how simple the circuit is and the way it works is when the transmit line is active the transistor is on which means the LIN bus will be pulled to ground which is the dominant level. For receiving data, all we need to do is connect the LIN bus to the microcontroller through a voltage divider. As far as chips go, there's plenty of options out there, with some of them being priced as low as $1, but if you're just starting out, it really does make sense to buy something like this transceiver board, which allows you to easily connect your development board to it through wires. You'll probably also need a development board, so I'm going to recommend the MSP430 Launchpad, which I've talked about a lot in the past, and you're also going to be able to find links to all of these in the description down below. If you guys found this video useful, remember I've also covered the CAN bus in a separate video, I also have a video where I compare all the automotive networks like CAN bus, FlexRay, Most, and the LIN bus, and I also have videos on other serial communication interfaces like I2C, SPI, or WART. Before checking out those other videos, do like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you haven't already so you don't miss any future videos. I'll catch up with you in the next video. Stay tuned, guys.